Bora TV. The world is thinking. Now, let's just talk about a very different problem that people, this is something that people uh, have a great deal of difficulty with. Uh, as uh, Bill mentioned, I've been working on various aspects of the brain, mostly about how learning and memory takes place. But one of the deep things that's not understood are mental states. How do we form from neurons and chemicals uh, those states we have, our perception of the world, and of course the deepest problem is how do we become conscious? Now, part of the problem is to understand what is called scientific reduction. People, very, people get very nervous when you say that you're going to understand such things as consciousness scientifically. Now, but the underlying assumption that science would like to make is that everything in the world is composed of materials generously given to us by physicists, quarks, electrons, protons, and I think we could call this materialism. That is to say that the world is made up of material objects that the physicist gives to us. And so far, we don't know, but so far we haven't needed to invoke a Cartesian-like dualism in which a mysterious non-material non substance is poured into the material body. Now, this is a problem that philosophers have grappled with. They don't want to have a Cartesian dualism, yet they don't want to admit that things are constructed from material objects. So they try to find intermediate states. I don't understand any of these. But in any case, it's a problem that people are grappling with. And what this implies, if you take the materialist point of view, is that we must explain or construct everything that exists, everything that we experience, including living things, memory, how we learn, eventually what we feel, our consciousness, our awareness of ourselves from electrons, protons, atoms, and molecules. Now, some people find this threatening, but I don't find it particularly threatening because if you uh, tell me what the chemistry is of uh, the, the digestion of a great wine, I say that's very amusing, it's very interesting, but it's not going to stop me from enjoying the wine. The, our experience is independent of our understanding of that experience. It can be enhanced by that, but I don't think it has to be detracted. Now, one of the things that people say is that consciousness is subjective, ontologically in its nature, subjective. And so we cannot have an objective explanation. But as John Searle said, uh, we can have an objective explanation because it's epistemologically by, you know, objective. So in other words, we can have an objective explanation of what is subjective. Now, so that means that you have to assume the existence of entities, mental entities, but that's what we're in the business of doing. We, we construct things like that. We construct theoretical objects that are in agreement with our experience. Now, in my opinion, the problem is beautifully stated in a single sentence written by Santayana. And he says, all of our sorrow is real, but the atoms of which we are made are indifferent. And so the problem becomes, how do you construct real sorrow from hypothetical indifferent atoms? And to be truthful, no one has a clue, not a clue, but that's the problem. Now, is it insoluble? I don't know, but why throw up your hands? You know, a lot of other things have been thought to be insoluble, and then we solve them. We really don't know. 